So computers <clears throat> and cell phones and other electronic devices are now proliferating uh, in weird ways. They're not just uh, things that you recognize as IT devices um, because everybody else is quoting Forrester in the fourth wave. Lots of stuff is going to be embedded with microprocessors and circuit boards. Lots of stuff. Cars now and carpets, we found out, and all kinds of building things and building materials that are basically creating a feedback loop. So computers are just the beginning of this whole thing. That's a big deal. 70% uh, of the heavy metals that are in our landfills around the world are basically caused from this, from this stuff getting put in landfills in a raw state. And that's a lot. Now, heavy metals include things like lead, cadmium, mercury, uh, a version of copper that's in entirely poisonous to our water supply. What happens is in landfills, uh, there's a lot of debate on this, but essentially what happens is that it's, it's a source of water pollution, groundwater pollution. And that's the real, that's the real deal on this. Um, recycling rates are not very high in the world. Uh, in the United States, anybody have any idea what we're at on that? How many, how, how much of this stuff are we recycling? Anybody? Less than 20 percent. About 18 percent EPA 2008 study. Uh, let's see, in um, European Union where they have a kind of a unified computer recycling system, they're probably just around double that. And that's due to something called the WE Directive. Um, there is no unified recycling system in either un United States, Canada, or Mexico. There is not. There is a patchwork of stuff going on. Both in Canada and the United States, about half the states now, that means I think it's exactly 25, have recycling systems and they're all different. They're all different. It's a huge headache for the uh, computer makers that are carrying the weight of doing the recovery and take back of what equipment is collected and recycled. Uh, in the rest of the world, <clears throat> the, the situation is incredibly undeveloped. That means that there are two, two electronics end of life recycling plants in all of the continent of Africa, one in South Africa and one in Egypt. There are five or six recycling plants in all of the continent of South America and they're clustered in the big cities of those places in Brazil, Argentina, and one in, in Santiago, Chile. Uh, in Asia, all the recycling plants are clustered in the very far east part of Asia, in China, Japan, Korea, in a place where we're having enormous, enormous increases in uh, adoption of IT, which is India. Uh, there's one recycling plant just outside of Delhi, and that's it. That's all there is. There's no regulation. Japan has some regulation. Uh, Taiwan is considering having a recycling system. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So the other aspect of this that I was going to talk about is that um, the big thrust of recycling in the United States in terms of policy is driven by the environmental organizations. It's probably something that you need to know. The primary one, which is most famous for all of this, is called the Basel Action Network out of Seattle. And there's a, there's a group of environmentalist groups of which TechSoup is a part. It's called the, environment, or the Electronics Take Back Campaign. So that's, and these guys are pushing an agenda, okay, us guys are pushing an agenda that's all about limiting export of our electronic junk to developing countries, especially China. Where, and the reason why stuff is getting pushed to China is because the, uh, the, the Chinese will pay much more. Like it's, in the industry, we sometimes call it above ground mining. It's much cheaper to basically mine electronic junk than it is to, to get raw materials out of the earth. And so that's kind of an overview of what the entire e-waste field is about. <clears throat> 